Hello. Add a rain card and hit render animation. No, just kidding. We will be making rain cards at the end though. But first, let's create a rain sim. Add an icosphere and shade it smooth. This will be our water droplet. You don't need to change the shape of it, we'll be using motion blur to stretch it instead. Give it a glass material with an IOR of 1.33 and set the colour to a light grey. If you're using EV, make sure screen space reflections is enabled. Turn on refraction and turn on refraction again in the material properties. If you're using cycles and notice black spots in your final render, increase the transparency bounces. Now create a plane and add a particle system to it. Real rain falls at 8.94 meters per second, so rotate the plane to face downwards and set the normal velocity to match this. To make sure our rain is falling at the correct speed, turn off gravity and the scene properties and move the plane exactly 8.94 meters high. Run the simulation and make sure the particles land on the origin at one second. If your scene is in 24 FPS, this will be on the 24th frame. Tweak the normal velocity until the rain hits the origin exactly at this point. This is important for calculating motion blur correctly. Here's an example render using an incorrect velocity. If you want the particles to fall at an angle, add a wind object or rotate the plane. To add some variation to the particles, add a turbulence force field and play with the strength. You can use a noise modifier on the strength of the wind to add variation over time. Now let's get to rendering. In the render options of the particle system, set it to object and instance our droplet. You'll probably need to lower the scale. This is when you can increase the number of particles to go anywhere between a light shower to a downpour. Now open render properties and enable motion blur. Try different position values to adjust the look. I used end on frame. You'll also want to increase the max blur amount and number of steps to up the quality. Keep the shutter value at 0.5. This is a 180 degree shutter angle and will give us the best looking motion blur for our frame rate. I recommend using an orthographic camera. Adjust the orthographic scale to fit the scene. This is useful to avoid focal length mismatching when using rain cards in scenes with different cameras. We can light the rain using an overcast HDRI since rain typically occurs on cloudy days. To make sure the HDRI isn't in the final render, enable Film, Transparent. Then in the compositor, use an alpha over node to add the rain onto a black background. You can check Convert Pre-Multiplied and adjust the mix factor to dial in the look. When we create the rain cards, we'll just use the black background to control the alpha. This means we can export as an MP4 with H.264 encoding for tiny file sizes. I recommend trimming the exported rain in a program like DaVinci Resolve so there's no empty space in the rain when we loop it. To create a rain card, add a plane and set the scale to match the video resolution, then scale it back down to fit the scene. Replace the principal BSDF with an emission and transparent shader, and combine them with the mix shader. Plug the video color into the color socket of the emission and into the factor of the mix shader to control the transparency. Make sure you set alpha blend in the material properties if you're using EV. I tried alpha hash and had some issues. You can adjust the opacity by changing the emission strength and tweak the blending with the color ramp. Make sure cyclic and auto refresh are both checked. To create the splashes, first add a metabol object and scale it down. Now create a new plane, add another particle system to it and set the render object to the metabol. Metabols stick together based on proximity and this makes our particle system look like a splash. Lower the metal ball resolution to 0.1 to smooth it out. In the particle system properties, set the normal velocity to something similar to the rain sim. Increase the randomized value to add some random direction to the particles. I also set the scale randomness to 1. Finally, set the particle lifetime to something short like 12 frames, and bring the end time of the simulation down to frame 5. We only want one burst of particles. Render this splash to a single image. We'll use yet another particle system to create hundreds of little splashes. Import the splash image back into the scene and set it up in a similar way to the rain card. Now add one more particle emitter and this time set the render object to be the splash. You'll need to play around with the rotation of the splash in edit mode to make sure they face the right way in the particle system. Set the particle lifetime to one frame. Now render out the sequence, re-import it into Blender, set up the transparent shader and save it as an asset. By utilizing the asset browser, you can drag rain and splash cards into any scene. Duplicate them around and have lightweight, realistic rain in seconds. You can download the rain and splash card used in this video for free by clicking the link in the description. There's also a pack of five different rains and a more advanced splash card on my Patreon. If you find this content valuable, please like and subscribe so I know to make more. Thanks everyone. I hope you found the video helpful.